What up YouTube? Salvador Brigman here and today we're talking about the college major that you should pursue if you want to be an entrepreneur. So let me just preface this in saying, uh, I'm gonna share a little bit of my own story here, being an entrepreneur with college and such, but I think that the, the, the very healthy framework that every entrepreneur should have is that the majority of their learning, the majority of the things that they learn in their career as an entrepreneur is actually gonna come from trying things out. From trying things out, seeing what happens, and then sort of measuring the results. And that's not only how you're gonna see what works in the marketplace, but it's also gonna be how you see uh, uh, what skills you're good at, or what you should be doing, is by trying things out. So to give you an example here, um, when I was, I think I was 18 or 19, going to my sophomore year of college, uh, I had this fabulous idea. I was probably drinking too much coffee. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, like ebooks are becoming a really big thing. There's a whole craze around like Amazon ebooks. But I have this big library at home with all of these books. What if, whoa, wait, what if we just took these books and we scanned them? Because like you buy a physical book, you own a, a license of that. You should be able to have a digital copy um, accompanying that. You, don't, you shouldn't have to buy another digital version of a physical book you already have. What if we offered a scanning service? So that's what I did. <laughs> I registered the website domain name books2ebooks.net. And basically, this site I set up maybe in like two days, three days. Uh, I coded it myself, you know, used some frameworks to help me out. And I, I didn't really expect very much, but I announced this website on my blog at the time. And ironically, like, I woke up one morning and I started to see some of these orders piling into my email. And I'm like, what the heck? Like, people are actually interested in this service? What? <laughs> So I had people, legitimate people around the world interested in this service. I was like, oh my gosh, like Sal, you're gonna be a millionaire. <laughs> you know, this is your idea, this is it. So I start to you know, wade through all these different orders, you know, <clears throat> and then I'm like, okay, I actually have to now create this service. So what I did was I started to like look into, okay, if I'm gonna get a scanner, how much does that cost? If I'm gonna offer this service, how long is it going to be to scan a book? Um, my initial idea was that I could like have a lit library of scans and if someone ordered a book that I already had the scan of, I could like send it to them. And even the people that sent in their books, I could also maybe have a, a program where I would donate the books or I could even sell the books for a small amount and make some money that way. And what I realized after actually going into the numbers was this was not a profitable business idea. In fact, this is a really stupid business idea. I would end up wasting a lot of time. I would barely make any money, like maybe pennies on the dollar. It'd be uh, very difficult to get someone else to hire them to do this service, and it didn't make sense. But at the same time, it was really cool because I saw there were actually other book scanning businesses uh, that were out there and my website was ranking better than them on Google. I'm like, what? <laughs> you know, that's crazy. So I had a, a hypothesis. You know, I had a business idea. I tried it out. It didn't work out. You know, the business, you know, it wasn't something that I pursued. But at the same time, I learned a tremendous amount. Not only did I learn I can market things, but I also learned that um, you have to be aware of how profitable a business is. You don't just wanna offer something. You also wanna offer something that is profitable. Just cause you can do something, just cause you can make money at something, doesn't mean it's the best business out there. Um, so that's something I learned from that. And I would recommend you do the exact same thing in college. You try things out. You try out that stupid business idea cause you never know what you're gonna learn. You're gonna learn about yourself, you're gonna learn about the business, you're gonna learn about the industry, et cetera. It's really cool. And it's a time in your life where like, it doesn't matter if you fail. Like, you might have some people laugh at you, or you might have your friend like tease you, but who really gives a fuck? I, oh shoot, I should have said that. <laughs> who really cares? <laughs> Sorry, I don't know if you're allowed to swear on, on YouTube. Um, but yeah, in terms of the actual major, um, in terms of the actual major, 
I actually don't think this matters as much as you might think it does. Now, if you're going into investment banking, if you're trying to become a CEO of a really large company that already exists, if you're trying to become an executive of some sort, yes, your college major and your after college schooling, your MBA, your graduate studies are going to matter. If you're trying to though become a thoroughbred entrepreneur, you know, someone who doesn't answer to a boss, it is your own business, that is not going to matter as much because credentials are for employees. You know, credentials are for um, an employee showing a boss you know something or willing to command a higher price point in the labor market because you've studied this subject, which is apparently um, of high value. So a person pursues an MBA track because they want to earn more money. Or a person studies this thing because the anticipation employer will like it. But since you are your own employer, it doesn't matter. What I think it is valuable, you know, in terms of studying is number one, studying the industry that you want to go into. So if I knew that I want to be in the media industry, I would have studied that way more in college. You know, I would have looked into the, the history of the media industry and like the different various players and like when they came about, like when CNN came about and the, the, the environment it came about in. Because then I could use that information to create products or use that information, that strategy for my business uh, strategies, etc. So I would have studied more things that were in line with the industry I wanted to enter. In addition, um, I will say there is some value for some core courses in business. So these core courses could be economics, you know, micro and macro. It could be money and banking, so you understand that system of the economy. It could be a very, very basic course, um, maybe like financial accounting. I did a financial accounting course, um, and basically I learned all about uh, not only managing your accounts as a business person, but also the future value of money, how money compounds over time, and why that's such a powerful concept. And now I apply that in my own investing behaviors. So I learned about like index funds and all these different types of investments, ways I can grow my wealth. So there's a lot to be said for basic classes like that, but if you're just talking in the major, it's not going to matter as much. Um, I declared my econ major as a junior, and I didn't. I had never taken an econ class before I declared that major. Uh, I basically was like, well, this looks good, let's try this, and I had to decide on a major. So I did that, um, and I did fine, you know, it did pretty well with that. Um, so you can, you can literally declare whatever you want, but try to have the overall courses and tract be beneficial for you. And it's very hit and miss. I remember taking a public speaking course and I didn't learn anything there. Like I thought I would learn a lot with like the interpersonal relations course I took, but no, didn't learn a lot. It's all basic knowledge. Um, I've learned a lot more just speaking to a camera than I ever did with my public speaking course. So you're it's always going to be hit and miss with the courses that you take. Now, that being said, so you have a little bit of an idea of what you should be doing in terms of taking lots and lots of action. Um, I think that for me at least, the, the second business venture that I had uh, showed a tremendous amount about what I'm good at and what I'm not. So this is hard to recognize just from a studying, just from your academia, what you're actually good at. You actually have to have jobs, or you have to have internships, or you have to actually be doing work to figure that out. Um, in terms of the second business venture, basically, I met this guy about my same age, I think it was maybe 19 or 20, and we had this idea to create a music sharing website. And this site would be kind of similar to SoundCloud or Bandcamp, and you could also collaborate with musicians. So you could have a musician that creates maybe um, the singing, and you have another musician who creates the, the bass or like you know other musical instruments. You can combine it all together into one track. It's kind of like GitHub, but for music. It sounded like a cool idea. So number one, we had a cool idea. Number two, we're young, we're ambitious, we think we can do it. Um, then came the execution part, and this is really where it became a little bit sticky. So the execution part, we created the website app, but it didn't function as most people thought it would. It was kind of clunky, wasn't very well designed. It just wasn't um, compelling enough of an application to get people to use it. 
I think at our high point, we had like maybe 200 or 300 users um, and people like some people were uploading some stuff, but it wasn't in any kind of way viral activity. And also people didn't really come back to the website. You know, it wasn't compelling enough for them to, to keep uploading their stuff. So what I learned from that was I am not a thoroughbred coder. You know, I know how to code. Like I know how to do like CSS, HTML, PHP a bit, Ruby on Rails a bit. Like I can figure out programming. I can figure out, I did Java for like two years in high school. I learned C++, um, learned a lot of basic languages, Visual Basic, et cetera. But like, I am not a thoroughbred coder. You know, it's not my role, I think, within a startup to do that. I'm more of a content guy. I'm more of a marketer. I'm more of a salesperson. Um, that's sort of my own, I think, makeup or my genetic makeup as an entrepreneur. And I learned that from that venture because had I been a coder, I would have been able to execute much better, much more rapid. Um, we would work w way more in sync. I'd be more enthusiastic about that side of the business. And I also learned that um, at that point in time, I was far more committed to entrepreneurship than my co-founder. Uh, I was willing to move to New York City without any job without any money really and try to hack it with the business and he was not willing to do that. Uh, so I learned I had a really intense drive for this thing, which, which has led to most of my success, which is just being willing to work a lot, being willing to um, have that level of hustle. So that showed me something about myself. Now that's the same thing that's gonna happen when you begin to try things out. A great framework for this, I recommend the Lean Startup by Eric Ries. So the Lean Startup, it's the very basic framework of rather than trying to maximize for profitability or trying to maximize for revenue when you're starting a company, you should maximize for learning about your customers. So you're doing things to learn as much as possible about your customers. Um, and sort of the, the, the framework here is you have a hypothesis about your customers. You try it out, you analyze the results, and you see what happens. That's sort of the framework for the Lean Startup. So I recommend checking out that book. Last story I'm gonna share here, because I don't want this video to be too long for you guys, is um, when I was also in college, I tried out this other startup called, uh, it was for an applicant tracking system, which is basically a recruitment software solution. So if you're a recruiter, you would use this software in order to um, do your job. Or if you're trying to hire people at your company, you would use this software to process applicants and such. And <clears throat> the co-founder I also met at a networking event. He was older than me. He had already invested $200,000 into the startup. And it was my job basically to be the salesman, to sign up new accounts, um, to do a bit of the marketing, et cetera. And I would maybe get like 10%, maybe 20% of the business if I worked really hard you know, over a span of years. So I was like, wow, that sounds like a good opportunity. I have a leg up, you know, there's already the app. I thought I had solved that problem, but the end up, what it ended up happening was um, the applicant tracking system was not differentiated enough from the other things out there. And I didn't know that going in because I had never, I was not a recruiter. I had never sold these types of products before. So I learned that you need to have intimate knowledge about the customers and about the target audience to know what's going to work. And you also have to um, really have a, a clear understanding of how it's differentiated from the competition. And I also learned that I think executing my own ideas is far better than executing other people's ideas because the, the previous two ventures didn't end up working out. Um, so that's something really cool that I realized from this venture. I hope you found this video to be helpful if you are looking to become an entrepreneur and you're sort of wondering what you should study. Again, to recap, it does not matter as much what you study if you wanna run your own business. I would instead try and use the courses that you're gonna be taking to improve your career, whether it's learning about the industry that you're trying to go in, whether it's learning some of the core basics of business or even using it to network with professors, honestly. Um, I think that could be a really good way to make use of your college experience. Um, we see all the time, you know, entrepreneurs break, uh, dropping out of college and, and such like that to pursue their business. But at the same time, remember to always be learning. 
whether it's on YouTube, whether it's via podcast, whether it's via reading books, reading books on accounting or on business or on marketing, you need to be continually learning if you want to be successful online uh, or in a traditional style business. So if you did like this video, give me a thumbs up and come subscribe for more videos like this and you'll get a notification whenever I come out with a new video. Again, my name is Sal and I'll see you next time.